in a matchup of top 10 heavyweights with explosive knockout power. A finish could happen on both sides at any moment. Plus, former Olympian Hector Lombard welcomes former UFC champion Johnny Hendricks to the middleweight division. UFC Fight Night, Sunday, February. Thank you so much for joining us today. Very exciting Q&A for you guys today. You know why you're here. Please welcome. Let's go. <laughs> The fourth time you fought him and you soccer kicked him in the face. Was that not one of the surreal moments of your life? I'm going to take your hometown boys, Bill. Whoever's next, <laughs> that's who I want to fight. Uh, He's CN Punk. Yeah, that's what he brings I, uh, to the table. Of course I think I'll be him. Why the hell would I take the fight? We're on the same page. So, so we're normal. Well, we're the only two <laughs> out here. That's I have no idea. <laughs> Next question. I'm trying to keep up with Mr. Buffer. <laughs> Alifax, how you guys doing? All right, real quick, before we get things started, just want to let you guys know about a big opportunity after the weigh-ins. 6.30, 8 p.m. on Granville Street. You guys can head over to Boston Pizza. Chance to hang out with our UFC Octagon girls. Both Jim Millette and Vanessa will be there again. That's 6.30 to 8 p.m. tonight at Boston Pizza on Granville Street. Also, will you guys see where the microphones are? If you guys could do us a favor, when you guys want to ask questions, just form a line, and we'll alternate microphones when we do so. Two things, guys. We do not have any tickets to give away, although there are still some on sale, but they're, they're going pretty quickly. So if you want to come, go get those tickets here fast. Additionally, we can't, don't interrupt the flow of questions to ask these gentlemen for pictures. If when they're done, if they're willing, they will go down there and they'll do all that. So we don't want to waste a question on a picture because if they go do that, it's going to take them off the stage. It's going to take a long time. Can't do it. All right. Without further ado, please welcome these two stars to the stage. The number five flyweight in the world, Sergio Pettis, and number eight ranked lightweight in the world, Michael Chiesa. Both of these gentlemen on three fight win streaks. Welcome. Welcome. Kiesa up here looking like a light heavyweight. That division is thinning out a little bit. Maybe we'll get him to jump up when he comes back. All right, guys, if we could go ahead and let's make some lines. I am looking for the microphones here. Where are they at? All right, here we go. First up, right over here. Oh, not me. I'm just hey. showing you where it's at. All right, all right. Well, hey, I'll kick things off then. Since you guys are a little nervous, I'll warm you guys up. Michael, obviously, you ruptured your L5 vertebrae several weeks ago. What is the timeline on your return now? Uh, from what I've been told, about three weeks, I should be able to come back. Um, didn't really have any structural damage done. Just, uh, you know, just kind of flared things up a little bit. So I'm, I'm aiming to get back in the octagon in April. And he's already called out the former champion, Eddie Alvarez, wants that for his return fight. Makes sense. That may actually be the return bout. Exciting, exciting fight. Sergio, you're on a three-fight win streak. Obviously, you want a title shot. Have there been any talks about who's next for you? Um, still, still waiting just to see where the flyweight division goes. Uh, everyone that I want to fight right now has a fight. So, uh, just wait and see what, see what happens. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys, let's open up to you guys. Who's got first question out there? I'm just going to pick somebody. <laughs> you right there. I'm looking at you in the North Face jacket. You, you asked someone a question. Yeah, you right there. Get on up there. Start asking some questions. Come on. Hey, I'm gonna, not Don't to throw Serge you under the bus, but how many Chris Kaladis fans do we have out there? Come on, Halifax is on, right? Great guy, great guy. Great guy, great guy. I thought Sergio was going to get booed. I thought Sergio was going to get booed when he walked out here because they fought two fights ago. Yeah, I just booed him yesterday, actually. Great guy. Uh, oh, right here, yes. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. Uh, do you think that you will take the championship away from Eddie? Well, um, you know, Eddie lost the title to Connor, but it's a fight that makes sense. Uh, Eddie's a tough guy, former champion in, in other promotions, but he's had his time. I think it's mine, and, uh, you know, he says he wants to sit around and wait to see what happens on March 4th, but, you know, why don't you, why don't you fight somebody? Don't just sit around and wait for it. You've got to go get it. So, you know, if he's man enough to step up to the challenge, there's a big bearded guy in the Pacific Northwest waiting to get in a 15-minute <laughs> fist fight with him. So let's see if he, let's see if he takes the bait. <laughs> 
All right, I, I can see what's happening here, right? You guys all got here early, and you don't want to lose your spot for the weigh-ins. I get it. And they put the microphones back there, so nobody wants to leave their spot. Here's the deal. I promise you, if you leave your spot, let me know if they don't let you back in. I'll make sure that they do. So you guys, you guys got here. You got here early. That's your spot if you want to go back and ask a question. Over here, who's first up? The gentleman in the red shirt. Fire away, buddy. You got something. What do you want to ask him? Oh, no. Boy. Right here. We got one right here. Oh, there we got we another go. one. Yeah. Come on up to the microphone, guys. I got another one. Go for uh, it. Sergio Pettis, uh, what kind of fights are you looking for, like, uh, kind of like in the future? Um, I mean, obviously, the whole goal is to be the champion. Uh, Got to take my, my time and go through the rankings. Uh, currently number five? I think number seven right now. But uh, So I got a lot of people in front of me that I got to get through and just got to keep performing the way I performed my last fight and slowly feeling comfortable in the octagon. This is the first. I've never had to correct a fighter on their own rankings. But, I mean, I just looked up two seconds ago and it said you were number five in the world. So don't shortchange yourself. Uh, I guess I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> Works out. All right, we got – oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Moment of silence for the WEC hoodie over there. Oh, nice. Hey, thank there you. We go. Please, right. sir, please, sir, ask your question. So we've seen a lot of interim titles show up recently. There's one lightweight division. Just looking for your thoughts. <laughs> uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. You know, I think that they should do an interim title if, if, you know, if the champion's got, like, a prolonged injury or something of that sort. But you can't have the champion take a hiatus, you know, for personal reasons and, and back up a whole division. You know, it's uh, the lightweight division hasn't had the belt move around as much as it should. Uh, so I think that they should do away with the interim titles. But, you know, uh, I'm, not there to make the, I'm not there to make the shots, you know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't be mad if I fought for one. You know, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of them. But if like, hey, you want to fight for an interim title? Like, yeah, sure, <laughs> let's do it. Sergio, any thoughts on the interim titles? I mean, I would love to. I don't think they ever had one for the flyweight division. But uh, I, I want the real title, so I'll go through the rankings and go through the fights the way I'm supposed to. Excellent, excellent question. Next up over here, yes, sir. Yeah, I was wondering, you got the night, guys? Fedor or Meathead? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I'm going to have to go Fedor. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of him, but I'm not as much focused on that heavyweight fight. I'm more focused on Derek Brown or Travis Brown and Derek Lewis. So I'm more focused on that fight than uh, whatever fight that promotion's in going on tonight. Same. <laughs> Being a company employee. Smart answer. Smart answer. Smart. Who's next? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's from Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you talk about your experience in the Ultimate Fighter house and how transitioning into like a real professional now? I mean, that's a little bit in your past, but like rolling in to become the professional athlete that you are and just the experience there and how it's seemed to springboard you a bit. And you always see these Ultimate Fighter champions in the uh, television show coming out doing well. You got a lot of champions coming out of there. And, you know, do you think that's going to help you become a champion? Yeah, well, the one thing that the Ultimate Fighter helped me with a lot was preparing me for not just competing in the octagon, but everything that comes with it. You know, that was a three-month season. That's sure. a quarter of a year that I spent pretty much in a college situation to get into the UFC. So I was rooting me, for you. Yeah, it got me accustomed to the media. It got me used to being under the bright lights and, and uh, just kind of everything that comes with it. And, you know, I just, I, it, it was a great platform to start my career. And, you know, when I had my first UFC fight at uh, 157, I just, I felt like I've already done this a million times. It was, uh, there was no such thing as octagon jitters for me that night. And uh, it just made me really comfortable and, and very, uh, I'm very confident that I'm going to, I'm going to achieve my goals of becoming champion. I think that being on the show had a big part of that. Okay. Can I follow up? Just one quick Absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Uh, both of your opinions on the return of probably the greatest welterweight in all of the UFC's history, Mr. GSP, coming back into the fold. I know you want to be on that card, and I know you want to get that bank day on that card. So tell me, both of you, please, I want to hear from both of you your thoughts on him as a legacy and what you think he can do moving forward coming back. We're excited. I'll go first. Yeah. Uh, actually, my, my first fight was on GSP's last fight. So. Nice. And that was the first time I was starstruck. That guy's amazing, man. I'm a big fan of him. I'm excited for his return. I mean, he's had a couple years off, but he's Green an athlete. He's Not amazing. that we're counting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he's back, though. Very excited to have him back. Cool. Uh, one of the things I love about George the most is, is, you know, he is a great ambassador for the sport. You know, he, he's a really good guy. He trains really hard. 
Um, he represents his country really well. And, you know, being on the same card as him, that'd be great. I mean, I got to be on the same card as Ronda Rousey's UFC debut. And it's always cool to be a part of a big event like that to, you know, because it, it's, a, it's a big deal. You look back when your career's over and you can say, hey, you know, I, I fought the night that GSP made his comeback. And I do think that he still has relevance within the division. I know he works hard. He takes care of his body. And granted, he may be in his mid-30s. I know that he can still become a champion and he can still kind of pick up where he left off. Cool. All right, appreciate it, fellas. Oh. Excellent questions. Excellent questions. Who's next? I'm going to start picking people again. If we not. got one right here. Go ahead, sir. Uh, this, is, this is a question for uh, both of you. Who do you think is going to win the main event, and uh, how do you think it will be done? Ah, oh, man, this is a hard one for me. Now, just so you guys know, neither one of them are back there yet, so you can totally get no, away with this. You're not going to be held accountable. <laughs> um... I know Lewis is killing it right now, but uh, Travis is a gamer, so I mean, I, it's, MMA, it's crazy, man. Whatever happens, happens. The, a game of inches, so I mean, I, I couldn't call it. I, I don't know. How about you? Uh, you know, sometimes I've got to be a little bit biased. I'm in the same boat, whereas I think it's going to be a pretty close fight, but Travis Brown was my very first friend I ever met in the UFC. He, uh, I was out by myself at the UFC in uh, Fort Lauderdale by myself with nobody, and he took me under his wing, and you know, he reaches out to me on fight day and, and things of that sort. So I'm going with Travis Brown. On top of that, he's got a lot of physical gifts, very tall. He's got good reach. Um, I know he's working with Ray Seffo for this camp, and I think that that could change up his striking approach a lot as compared to who he was working with in the past. So I'm going to take Travis Brown. And can I ask a follow-up question? Uh, who do you think George should fight next, like well, first it's return? Ooh, great question. Who do you got? GSP's first fight back. Who do you want to see? I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Sergio, who would you like? I'd probably go with Diaz. It's 209, right? 209 UFC. Yeah. I think Diaz, Nick, Nick Diaz, I think he's young. A lot of rumors flowing around it could be Nick Diaz. He's been waiting. He's turned down a couple of fights, maybe because he was waiting for GSP to come back. Regardless, the return of GSP, he's going to blow the roof off of wherever he's at. So I've, I've personally been able to speak to some of his coaches about his return and ask them, you know, why? Do you guys really feel the need? I mean, he's got such a great legacy. Does he need to come back? And they both told me, this is Farah Sahabi, and then it also is grappling coach John Donaher in New York City. Both of them told me, look, you don't understand. He's been training the whole time he's been gone, and they feel like he's legitimately better now than he was when he left. So exciting things for George St. Pierre. Got one, sir. Hey, guys. Just a big fan of both of you, and love that you're in Halifax fighting. But my question's actually for Brian. I am a huge fan of yours. And, <laughs> and I know you're retired, but if there was one fight to bring you out of retirement, what would it be? If there was one fight to bring me question. out of retirement. That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> Solid question. Yeah. I mean, oh, Bisping, but we've gotten to know each other. We're, we're friends now. In, in all honesty, it, it would be Vanderlei Silva. Um, just to get that one back, and, and I would do it. I'd clear some chairs right here, and we would do it in between these metal poles for you guys. And I guarantee you, Vanderlei would accept too. We'd move a few of these chairs, we'd get it done, and we'd start right where we left off, where I was unconscious. Would love it, every minute of it. <laughs> Go ahead, young man. Hey, there. I was just wondering, the big card coming up with uh, Tyron Woodley and Stephen Thompson fighting for the welterweight title, as well as Habib and Tony Ferguson fighting for the interim lightweight title. We're going to start with Sergio on that one because I want to get Michael's op opinion last. That's his weight division. Go ahead. Who you got in those fights? That's true. Who you got in both those fights? Both those fights? Um, let's see. I I'm going to go with Woodley. He trains with us at, uh, at Rufus Sports. So He's a hard worker too, man. I see the, the work that this guy puts in, his wrestling. He's open to learning new stuff, and he's a great champion. He's gonna, I think he's going to continue what he's doing. Um, I, for some reason, I think Khabib's going to win, man. I think, I think his, his control is amazing on the floor of wrestling. I will see what Ferguson can throw. He's, he's a very creative striker, creative grappler. So, man, it's going to be an interesting fight, but I got Khabib on that one. All right. I'm taking Tyron. Uh, you know, he's got a great wrestling base. I think that if he goes back to his roots in this fight and re really focuses on being a gritty, hard-handed wrestler, I think, I think that that would be a good game plan for him. And I, I, I have a gut feeling that that's the game plan he's going to implement in terms of Khabib versus Ferguson. 
I think Tony Ferguson's a better fighter all around. He's got great striking. He's a good wrestler. He wrestled in college. He's got good jiu-jitsu. But this is a very bad matchup for him. You can't roll around and do all your funky little cartwheel, hoop de la whatever the heck you call it. Like, he's always just kind of <laughs> rumbling, tumbling all over the place. And if you go against a guy like Khabib or myself, you're going to get yourself stuck in a really bad situation. So I'm taking Khabib. Um, not saying Khabib is the better fighter, but I just think it's just a bad matchup for Tony. So follow-up question for you on that. If Eddie Alvarez is your return fight, you get a win, you could very well be next in line, right? Not knowing what Conor McGregor is going to do, what weight class he's going to be in. Which one of those two do you feel like you match up better against? You know, they're both fun fights. You know, um, I actually almost got the Khabib fight when Tony wasn't coming to terms with this contract. There was a, you know, there was a window where it was looking like that was what was going to happen. Um, I think I, I think I could give Khabib a lot of problems. You know, he, I know he's very strong. He applies weird pressure, but I know that I could keep myself moving on the ground if he does lock up with me and we do get into a wrestling situation. You know, I think that I would be a hard fight for him, and I definitely think I could beat him. And the same thing with Tony. I mean, Tony, Tony's the fight where you're going to walk out of there lumped up. <laughs> you know, there's, that's fine. That's the fight game. But I definitely, definitely deep within my guts know I would beat him, like for sure. I, I, you know, I went through almost a whole camp training for him before I asked for the fight and you know knowing that I could beat him and I have the tools to do it I think I could beat anybody in the division honestly so yeah hopefully uh whoever wins it I'm game so many fun fights in lightweight division all right who's got next hey guys I was just wondering uh with the retirement of Joe Silva how things have changed from a matchmaking perspective good question I think I got Sean as my matchmaker right you do so nothing's really changed for me but uh yeah. Uh, with Joe, um, you know, um, the thing that makes it different for me is I have a personal relationship with Sean. You know, he, he matched, before Joe left, he matched make, he did all the matches for 145, 35, 25 in the females, and then Joe took everything from 155 and up. I always had a good relationship with Joe. You know, pretty much any, any opponent I ever asked for, he gave it to me. Um, I never asked for scrubs, so he always gave me the fights I asked for. Um, and with Sean, it's just different, you know. Um, you know, I need to keep the separation between business and friendship. We're always going to maintain the, the friendship we have and hang out and stuff. But, you know, I'm not going to bring that into the business side of, of the sport. So, uh, you know, I haven't really had to deal with it quite yet. But, uh, you know, yeah, it's a little different. Can't ever really replace a Joe Silva who's been here from inception. But when you really look at his departure, how quickly Mick Maynard came on, and the fact that you haven't seen any major fall-offs, is a, is a true testament to that department and, and really Sean Shelby's hard work, bringing Mick on, getting him up to speed, divvying out some weight classes, and moving forward. So really, really, I think a lot of people are really excited and proud of those two gentlemen, how quickly they've been able to, to deal with that. Okay, thanks. Excellent question. Thanks. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Um, huge Baby Pettis fan. Um, <laughs> I've called you that since you started. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so very important question. Um, GSP is returning. Yay. Um, and I noticed that he wears the shorty shorts, and I was wondering if those are returning, and if either of you guys would consider wearing them too. <laughs> Pettis, you're going first on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Pettis, I like that. Um, I, wear, I like to wear the, sh the short shorts too. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I, I like my legs. So. Yeah, yeah, me I like. Too. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Does everybody know what the short shorts are out there? It's basically like wearing underwear to fight, right? We're all okay. We call them yes. spankies. Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm not George's uh, stylist, or I don't do his fashion coordination, but I would assume that he's going to wear his spankies and show off his Canadian buns. But uh, personally, myself, um, I got really skinny legs, and I don't care. They're, you know, small, but I don't like the spankies, but I do wear short shorts. So, um, yeah, it's whatever. At the end of the day, it's just a fight, shorts, pants, jeans. Nothing. Not whatever. for all. We're gonna do the same thing. Yeah. On the Ultimate Fighter, this guy looked like he was a homeless dude. You're not getting him to wear the spankies. Not a chance. <laughs> I still look homeless. I got a mullet. <laughs> Next up, Sergio. Uh, you train with CM Punk at Rufus Fort, and rumors come out that he's looking for another fight. How do you think that's gonna go? How's he been in the gym since he got destroyed by Mickey Gall? <laughs> Ooh, oh man, I, I know a lot of people don't have a probably a good taste of CM Punk in their mouth just, uh, you know, because he came in and, you know, got the big fight right away. But uh, I think CM Punk's uh, amazing, man. He's, I think he's going to do good. He's eager to learn. He's one of the hardest workers. This guy would drive from Chicago every day to come to our practices. And he put in a lot of time, a lot of uh, effort into this. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for his return. And 
we'll see. Uh, we'll see the improvements he makes. Great. It's important for the fans to know. I, I will tell you, you know, when CM Punk came in, he treated every single athlete with a ton of respect. Very down to earth guy. And so, from the fighters' perspective, everybody really liked him. You know, I mean, to come from that level of stardom, the amount of money he made to say basically, hey, I want to leave this because I want to be more like you guys, it bestowed a lot of respect and honor on us to see him admire us. So, and, and he was very, very humble in doing so. He's, yeah, he's definitely a team player. Uh, when I initially hurt my back and had to pull out of the Ferguson fight, he reached out to me on Twitter and was like, hey, man, I went to the same injury. You know, I hope you heal, heal fast, and if you have any questions, just get a hold of me. And that's pretty big, come, yeah. you know, considering I've never met the guy or really interacted with him, for him to reach out like that. He's a good dude. Brock Lesnar's not reaching out like that. No. <laughs> but then again, I don't think he has a cell phone, to be honest. So. <laughs> Next up. Uh, Michael, uh, your last fight w against Benil and Darius, you absolutely fucked him up. Um, you, were, you were on a little bit of a streak there. Tell me how that fight would have went with Tony Ferguson. Um, I'll tell you exactly how it would have went. Uh, you know, Tony probably would have, we would have landed some punches. We probably would have hit each other a lot, kicked each other a lot. There would be some takedowns. There'd be some scrambles. But, you know, I think that when he goes for that, you know, the funky Iminari roll, it's an Iminari roll as, as we call it, um, that'd be a big mistake against me. I mean, you can't expose your back to me. Um, you know, I'll ride you like a Jansport backpack and, and uh, catch your <laughs> neck. So, uh, you know, he's a tough dude, man. He deserves to be where he's at. But I just think that... For how many risks he takes, uh, I'm just I'm not the guy to do that against. That that'd be that's just you're destined to lose. So I think that the fight it probably would have went a couple rounds. We would have lumped each other up, but I would have snatched that neck. So and if I could get a follow up, uh, if if you did win that fight, you would have fought Habib, obviously. Tell uh, me how that no, fight I think I would have fought uh, Hafa dos Anjos because that's the fight that Tony got after the the Lando fight. I think he would I think I would have fought Dos Anjos. But okay, but I mean if you were in this interim title fight and if you would have fought Habib. Oh, it would be, be a lot of wrestling. It would be a lot of, you know, Khabib's a very, you know, he's got that Sambo base. He's very centered, and uh, he throws his combinations into, into takedowns. I know he's got some freaking cock-strong grip, and, uh, you know, he probably, he probably would have taken me for a ride a few times. You know what I mean? He's probably a better wrestler, but I know that um, the longer the fight goes on, the better I would get, and, you know, I would just wear him out with the scrambles and, eventually, uh, you know, get the win somewhere or another. All you got to say is earmuffs. You say earmuffs, and, and you can say whatever you want, guys. Sorry, ladies. I'm sorry. Shame on Who's up next? Here we go. Hey, guys. I just want to say I'm the hugest fan. I'm a little nervous, so if I sound awkward, pardon me. But I got a question for all three of you. Since the return of George St. Pierre is confirmed, <clears throat> I have a question about Back in their prime, George St. Pierre versus Aaron Silva, 185 pounds. Who do you think would win? Go ahead. You guys first. Honestly. Uh, Anderson. You know, that's uh, – George George can make the – No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Time out. Time out. I, I just I'll have give, to ask, Mike, give do you, you really very, think Anderson could, give, could stop his shot? I'll give you a very analyzed uh, rundown. George can make 55. He's not a huge welterweight. I'm not saying he's lesser of a fighter than Anderson – but you're having to go up 15 more pounds in your normal weight class. I'm sure he would get some takedowns, but Anderson's a big guy. You know, he, he's not a small 185 or so. You know, I, I'm only saying that because, you know, the size Makes difference. Sense. It, it, it would present a lot of challenges, but I wouldn't be surprised if George rose to the occasion and beat him. So. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. I don't want to get booed, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'd probably have to go ahead. <laughs> go George. I got George. No, um, I, 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 I just think Silva's the bigger guy. Um, I think the styles are a little different. Um, he's pretty good takedown defense as well. Bigger guy, so I think that would play as, to his advantage. And the striking's legit, man. I mean, the guy's a, guy's a G. <laughs> I'll give you the answer you want. I think GSP takes it. Um, <laughs> I, I had the chance to train with him for a little while. And I watched him go with light heavyweights, guys like Rashad Evans, Keith Jardine. And, and when I watched him wrestle, spar, grapple with them, he'd win. You know, he'd take those guys down despite Rashad's wrestling game. He would take those guys down, and, and he would be able to control people. He's very, very heavy on top, and his ability to float is really solid. And just when you reference the Anderson Silva, Chael Sonnen fights, and in the first round of his first Chris Weidman fight, there, there were some issues there. And, those guys made some mistakes that GSP generally doesn't make. I mean, he's, he, he fights really well and really smart, so I'd give him the chance there. Right. Thank you guys so much. You got it. You're welcome.
No, I was about to pull an ally at Quinta. You booing me? <laughs> you booing me? <laughs> I, was, I was there that night, one of the more awkward nights of my broadcasting career. It was great. He still gets that, by the way. He'll be walking in public and people just say that to him. I fought that night, too. It was, uh, whew. That was crazy. Next up. Uh, it's uh, for Baby Pettis. Um, <laughs> this is going to stick that's down. Stuck, man. Man. Hashtag stick. the shit out of that. That's is it because I shaved or what? No. All right, so uh, about two weeks ago, the New England Patriots won the Super Bowl, and I saw on TV probably the most best display of mental toughness I'd ever seen. And I think about fighters like that and your mental toughness. And Pettis, I hate to bring this up, but the two fights that, I, that you've lost are to Alex uh, Caresis. Caceres. Caceres. Yeah. Do you think he got you in a rear naked, maybe? A rear naked joke, yep. Yeah, and Ryan Benoit with punches. Left hook. Left hook. Right. Okay, so. <laughs> both, both fights he was winning. See, yeah. the mental toughness, you're right there. Uh, my, my, my question is, is that as a fighter, when you lose, it's, it's devastating. We hear from the top of the top to the bottom of the bottom when they lose, and you see it through social media how devastating, emotional it is. Where do you find the mental toughness to overcome those two, get on a three-fight winning streak, knock on that door again, and uh, once you answer that, you can follow up, Michael, if you want to hit on that as well. But if you could tell me who you'd like to get back of those two fights as well. Oh, of course, I would love to get those fights back. But uh, I think those fights are necessary for my career. Uh, Spoken I, like I, a champion. Was it? Spoken like a champion. Yes, sir. I feel like uh, that stuff, that those losses made me realize how much I love the sport and the stuff that I could work on to become better and better. And it definitely, like, the social media and all that stuff plays a role into it. But, uh, I mean, uh, a loss is a loss in, in life and in fighting. You lose, you either got two routes, you either get better or you get bitter. So, I mean, I definitely feel like I got better and I feel you, like they were necessary. Nice. When you're competing at the highest level in any sport, you're never going to go undefeated. I mean, you look at all the best athletes in all sports, they've all had to endure the losses and, yep. and I've always grown more from my own experiences, from my losses. I've always grown a lot more as compared to if I, if I win a fight, you know what I mean? So um, just, like, just like Sergio said, it's, it's very necessary to, you know, you got to take your lumps, and in order to win, you got to know how to lose, as the man Chael P. Sonnen once said. So uh, <laughs> that's my stance on that. Cool. Cheers. Thanks, guys. You get better or you get bitter. Yeah, I like that. I like Hashtag that a lot. That. Good words for anybody. <laughs> Still that from Duke. Like and not lose. <laughs> I, yeah, is that, I a, is that. that a team money team Canada hat? <laughs> there you go. You could be Floyd Mayweather and not fight anybody tough. Next up. Ooh. Uh, this is similar to the last question. Chiesa, so would you ever want to get uh, that bullshit doctor stoppage back? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, going through the negotiations for our next fight, um, you know, I made it very vocal. I don't want to fight anybody that's not ranked. I'm not only am I trying to continue my momentum, but I want to fight ranked guys. But you know, the lows on rematch was thrown out there, and I would definitely want to continue from where I left off with that fight. Um, you know, I lost, but he didn't beat me, and he knows that, and the fans know that. And uh, you know, I'm not bitter about it, but it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, between my two losses, Jorge Masvidal, that's fine, man. You got me, fair and square. But Joe. <laughs> That fight was, if that fight was in Vegas, it would have not been stopped. So. And, and so everybody knows he's talking about when, when Michael Chiesa took on Joe Lozon. Great fight. These guys were smashing each other. Lozon cut you with an elbow, I believe. It was a knee. A knee. Hit him with a knee. Cut his eye open. The doctors came in and said, hey, he asked, no, I want to fight. I'm fine. Doctor stopped because they thought the cut was too big, which happens sometimes. Sometimes the doctors say, hey, this, this is what's better for you. Um, and that's a good thing sometimes. In that fight, I've seen a lot of doctors that would let that fight play out for sure. We got time for a few more questions. Who's got, who's got a few more, guys? Yes. I got a question for Serge uh, on the topics of Serge. loss. Yep. Uh, your brother recently hasn't been doing too great. Yep. Has there been talks of like, what he wants next and who he thinks he, a good matchup for him? Um, I mean, he's still in the, you know, the talks of it. You know, he's, he's had some tough fights. Uh, he's fighting the top ten guys, and that's what happens when you fight top ten guys. Uh, sometimes the outcome doesn't always – turn out the way you want it to be. I've seen this guy go through amazing camps. Um, he's had a busy year last year, so, I mean, you know, we'll see where, he's, where his head's at, uh, where his, his physical ability is at, and we'll see what the next step is for him. But he's, he's doing good, though. He's, he's doing Who good. do you want to see him fight? Me? No, I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> man, I don't know, though. I mean, uh, uh, there's not someone really specific that I would, I don't know. Honestly, I couldn't answer that question. Connor. Connor? Oh, I mean, I think everybody. <laughs> everyone wants to fight Connor. 
<laughs> I'll touch on that. Just that last thing. It's it's unfortunate that Paul's training with you guys because I I always thought a, a matchup between your brother and Paul Felder would be a really fun fight. Two yeah. creative strikers, but they're teammates now, so. My dreams are crushed. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Felder, who fights Alessandro Ricci tomorrow night here. Paul Felder, his first camp ever with Rufus Sport, now training with Anthony and Sergio Pettis. Yep. And what is about you, that, these nicknames? Is there, is there something, the, the look on this guy's face, you just keep coming up with different names for him? I mean, We're enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know what it is. I think Baby Pettis is probably, I like that one. Though. You like that one? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> he looks so nice. Maybe that's it. Uh, maybe. Next up. Uh, sorry, more George St. Pierre questions. But um, do you think never Johnny a problem? Hendricks, we love him. You think Johnny Hendricks gets a, a shot at George St. Pierre because that loss to George was very controversial. I know there's obviously going to be the opportunity of super fights for George, but do you think Johnny deserves a rematch? Sergio, take that one first. Um, I mean, I don't know. He's been off for a while, and uh, Johnny, you know, hasn't. I think his last couple of fights weren't. You know, the outcome wasn't the greatest. But uh, uh, I guess it depends on where they both are. I know at 170, I don't think Hendricks could really make that weight because that's kind of tough on him. So. I think GSP would either have to move up or, I mean, I know he'd probably want to get that fight back to you, but, yeah, I'm not sure. Do you think George will have a hard time making weight? He's been away for over three years now, and he's a big, uh, was it 170? 170. 170. St. Pierre? I think he's pretty strict on himself, man. I think he'll make the weight cut no matter what. He's a dedicated martial artist. Uh, You know, I... I, uh just like, just like Sergio said, you know, yeah. Johnny's moved up to 185, and, and he's about to explore a new weight class. And uh, George actually isn't a, a huge 170. You know, Johnny's a lot bigger than he is, but I don't, I don't really think that there's any need for them to rematch in, unless there's, like, title implications. So uh, I, think, I think George is, at this point in his career, coming back, um, you know, not that Johnny Hendricks isn't an astonishing fighter. I think George wants big fights. He wants to fight champions. He wants super fights. So I don't see that happening. Do you think George is risking his legacy by going back into the ring after so much time? You're always going to risk your legacy anytime you compete. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're only as good as your last fight. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's no different than if he was still very active and competing. Your, your legacy is always on the line whether you're coming off a layoff or not. It's tough. It's a very different – as someone who has transitioned away from the sport – it's hard from waking up every morning, having that opponent, have this big mountain you've got to climb, that challenge, the thrill of the lights and the fans, and then all of a sudden it's just all over. And for a guy like George St. Pierre, who's such an elite athlete and still goes into the gym and smokes other elite guys when he trains in the TriStar, it's very tempting to go back and, and have that kind of adrenaline rush in your life again. It's, it's a hard thing to walk away from. I don't think he risks it. What he's done, he's done. Right? He can't, you can't change that. If he were to come out and he were to, to do something that tarnished the level of class he brought to the sport, that could tarnish it. But if he were to come after this long a laugh and lose a couple of fights, hey, look, he's over the hill. He shouldn't have come back. Still, in my eyes, I think he's the greatest to ever do it, but he's still going to be in that conversation with anybody who brings it up, going to be in the top three guys that they bring up. All right, guys, we have time for one more. Who's going to ask the last question? Right here. All right, so there's been a lot of talk about a fight between Floyd and Connor. If that fight were to take place, how do you guys think it'll play out? You go first. Uh, dude, two totally different worlds. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I, I just don't. I, the fight could materialize. It might not. I think it's just a total pipe dream, but they're two, in two totally separate realms. And, yeah, they both make a buttload of money, but who's going to give in? Who's going to box? Who's going to give in and do MMA? You know what I mean? It's, uh, uh, it, at this point, it's just a pipe dream, so I don't, I don't really know how that one will play out. Yeah, same, same here. Uh, I mean, the fight would be awesome. I think people would probably want to see it. But uh, like you said, there's two different realms. The, the MMA fight game is so different from the boxing fight game. Different gloves, different, different you know, ring, different cage. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to evaluate tape and say that you could legitimately think Connor can outbox him. Right, I mean that that's that's a really tough thing to come up with, uh, but in combat sports we see athletes who jump, you know, who go off a cliff. In terms of one day you just get old, and we don't know if that day has happened for Floyd Mayweather yet. And we also know that Connor's a really big guy, and so if he makes the weight that Floyd Mayweather has put out there, he could knock him out. But I mean, in all honesty, the, the odds of this thing actually happening are slim and none. I personally don't want to see it. I've never seen a Floyd Mayweather fight that I really enjoyed watching. No offense, I'm just being honest. But when you tell me that Conor McGregor is going to come back and face the winner of Khabib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson, are you kidding me? I mean, that, that to, in, in our world, in our MMA world, that blows the roof off a place. Who wouldn't want to watch that fight? So let's get excited for that one. Yeah. All right, guys, that's all we have time for. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. We've Thank got the weigh-ins coming up here in a minute. And just a reminder, uh, again, 
6.30, 8 p.m., Boston Pizza on Granville Street. You've got Vanessa Hanson and Jim Allette, the UFC ring card girls, will be there. You could go hang out with them tonight after the weigh-ins. Thanks for coming out, guys, and I just want to say hi to my mom. She's back home watching, and happy birthday, David. <laughs>